Okay, Joey, so tell tell me what we've done today and what has been the purpose of uh, the two kind of different forms of activism we've taken part in. Okay, so the different forms of activism we've taken part in today are both peaceful forms of activism, especially the SAVE movement. It's a love-based approach and we are just there to see the animals. The idea behind it is we're there to bear witness and today, uh, these days, we have technology like iPhones. We can bring the photos of these animals' faces out to the public and we can say, hey, these animals are innocent beings. They obviously don't want to go into a slaughterhouse and we can say this is where, where your food comes from. We get people to connect with the animals. Also, as an activist, it helps you realise um, that these are the animals you're fighting for and speaking for. And then you take uh, the conviction that you get from doing bearing witness and you come to outreach, AV, and we educate the public as to why uh, animals uh, have moral value and why uh, we can eat plant-based alternatives which are healthier so it's unnecessary to put them into slaughterhouses. So, I mean, some days you'll wait hours to get a van that comes past to, you know, pay tribute to the animals before they go in. What, what do you feel like you achieve with that? And why does it keep you coming out day in, day out? Okay. I think it gives you perspective doing this. Uh, you realise that you're not the one who's suffering, the animals are. So to be out there for a couple of hours is nothing compared to what the animals are going through or about to go through inside that slaughterhouse. Um, what we gain is a lot because we are spreading the message out there. I mean, it's pretty hard to get 50,000 people out to the front of a slaughterhouse to see what's going on with the animals, but we have iPhones, we have our Facebook accounts, and you know, we've all got about 1,000 people on our Facebook, 50 people at a slaughterhouse, and we can spread it like that. And this is how we curve uh, animal consumption and hopefully phase out these industries. What do you think to those people that say the way you behave is almost like an extremist? An extremist. I would say, as vegans, we want peace. Okay, now UK is already a country who cares about animals. Okay, people in this country care about animals. We just live in alignment with that. Now people might say, they might honestly believe, and I believe people are good people, that they truly do care about animals, but their actions don't reflect that. When they buy a chicken breast, that flesh was torn off of an animal who didn't want to die. So we can't love animals while we're consuming their flesh or paying for them to go into a slaughterhouse. And all we're doing is politely educating people on, uh, on connecting these dots. So in your YouTube videos, sometimes you've had quite confrontational yeah. conversations with people yeah. that work in uh, abattoirs. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that you're maybe blaming the wrong people there? Blaming the wrong people? Okay, so I don't place blame on slaughterhouse workers and I've said that to them. I said, it's, it, slaughterhouse workers are a product of a sick society who want to consume animal flesh. Now, as consumers, we have to understand that we're making slaughterhouse workers work in horrific conditions. In a slaughterhouse, it smells like blood and feces and fear, okay? Now, they don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I want to kill animals all day. That'll be a perfect job. Sometimes it's the only job they can get or sometimes they're pushed into it and it's only because of society. Now, do they have responsibility for stabbing animals in the throat? Yeah, they do. But do the consumers have even more so of a responsibility? Yeah, they do. So you can't just point the finger at slaughterhouse workers. And the point that, the reason that we're having, sometimes uh, they're getting aggressive is because I'm challenging their belief systems. I'm challenging people's belief systems, deeply ingrained belief systems, okay? Of course people are gonna be a little bit uncomfortable about that. They've been taught eating animals is the way for their whole lives. They, they think they love animals. They're consuming their flesh. I'm saying, I'm telling them that, that uh, animals have moral value. It's got to uh, rustle up some emotions, but I always remain polite to them, okay? I understand it's not uh, any of the consumers' fault that they've been programmed to believe that we need to eat animals for protein. It's not their fault. I used to eat animals four years ago, so I understand all of this and I've, I've interwoven that into, into my ad advocacy, so. So today, for example, yeah. some of the activists actually trespassed on uh, the abattoir property. Yes. Do you sometimes think that the movement is pushing limits that shouldn't be pushed? I think um, desperate times sometimes uh, things like this happen, okay? That's not my personal uh, way of uh, advocating the message, but we have to understand that what's going on in there is extreme. What's happening to these animals is extreme. If there were dogs in there, people's pet dogs that they care about, they'd be helping us. The public would be helping us stop those trucks. The public would be trespassing too. Now, am I saying we should be breaking the law to, uh, to help animals? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that when we weigh up what's actually happening to those animals in there, I think that they have you know, a pretty solid reason for being upset. 
It's interesting that you choose to call them slaughterhouses rather than abattoirs, which is the kind of the term many people use here okay. in the UK. What what is the kind of thought process behind that? So abattoir is like a fancy French name, and we like to use euphemisms. We like to call flesh meat. We like to call uh, cow flesh beef. So we use these euphemisms, okay? And this is what tricks us. This is what hypnotizes us. That is a place of slaughter that we're, we're murdering animals against their will. If you don't like the word murder, we're killing animals against their will in a, in a place that is legal. This is legal. So yeah, of course it's a slaughterhouse. I mean, my words don't even do what the animals go through justice. I mean, we know that many people that work in abattoirs are low paid, yeah. often migrant workers here in the UK. Do you think really kind of insinuating that they're inhumane helps anything? Uh, are the people that work in there inhumane? I think the people that work, work in there are conditioned to violence. Was that their choice? No. This is culture, this is society is violent, okay? They're a product of a violent society and they didn't choose to work in there. That wasn't their first choice when they were in school, I wanna kill animals all day. It's a horrible place in there. And this is a human rights violation, okay? And an animal rights violation. Okay, I don't want them working in there. I'd rather them picking strawberries or working in some plant-based milk uh, factory helping us create vegan products which are ethical. Okay, they don't cause post-traumatic stress disorder. Like, they have to take drugs to work in these places because it's so horrible in there. The rates of domestic violence in regions that have slaughterhouses, slaughterhouse workers are higher. So it's conditioning them to violence. If you're kicking cows around all day, stabbing pigs to death, uh, you know, slapping animals to death, uh, uh, around all day, you, you think you're not gonna, you know, it's not a fast step to hit a human, is it? I mean, here in the UK, they have some of the kind of highest welfare and, you know, standards for animals. Does it really feel fair to be targeting? Uh, the UK's high welfare standards, I'll tell you something about high welfare standards in the UK and in Australia, okay? RSPCA approve and monitor gas chambers where they lower pigs in a dungeon in a cage down into gas, okay? And they thrash around in there and scream for their lives and suffocate in CO2 gas. Okay, the gas reacts with mucous membranes in the inside their body and they, they it causes something called carbonic acid. And they thrash and suffocate in their last moments. It's horrible. Now this is RSPCA approved. So, I mean, we've seen footage of activists standing in supermarkets, yeah. blocking kind of families and kids from getting to the meat aisles. It does kind of all feel a little bit of a step too far sometimes. A step too far. If they seen what was happening to these animals in the slaughterhouse, they'd probably be on our side. To politely educate the public is not ex as extreme as what's happening to animals in slaughterhouses. So you have been to a kosher slaughterhouse and actually confronted rabbis there asking yeah. if do they feel what they're doing is religious? I mean, some people could take that as quite offensive and almost mm. maybe targeting a particular religion for that reason. No, no, see, I don't target any particular religion or any particular person who slaughters animals. I think it's all bad across the board. Now, people who justify killing animals in the name of God, I question. I say, do you think God really wants this? Because I don't, I don't think God wants that. And I ask them, do you think a slaughterhouse is a place of God? Now, if God created your children, God, which they believe God created their children and you showed your children a slaughterhouse and they felt sick, why would God create children to be scared of their own food? Okay, these are the questions I ask religious people. I've got nothing against their religion, but when you, when you use your religion to justify an immoral act, like abusing uh, human beings or killing innocent animals, then I step in and ask people. I mean, Do you feel like that that's your place to question such a kind of person? Well, Okay, so I'm defending animals. I'm speaking for animals. So yes, it is my place. These animals can't speak for themselves. I don't care what religion you are, what you look like. I'm not uh, in it about that. I'm in it to defend animals, to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Okay, if I don't, who's gonna? People are just gonna go walk all over animals and animals can't voice their suffering, can they? They can't. So you've compared the animal rights movement to me, you've likened it to the slave trade and apartheid okay. in South Africa. Yeah. Talk me through the thought the reasoning? process there, because that okay. feels quite extreme. Okay, okay. So baseless discrimination is what allowed the uh, uh, transatlantic slave trade to happen. Baseless discrimination. They are different to us, okay? So we use that, that baseless discrimination to justify immoral treatment. In the same way that we discriminate against different species of animals, okay, which is baseless discrimination. We're saying pigs, cows, chickens and fish 
look differently to us. They're not, they're not my pet dog. So it's okay to treat them as objects, as products. We're talking about sentient beings. Am I saying a pig is the same as a human being? No, I'm saying that the baseless discrimination is what's the same. Speciesism is where we discriminate against animals based on their species. So dogs we care for, but inherently dogs and pig are, pigs are the same, but we condemn pigs to gas chambers. Now, inherently, white people, black people, Asian people are the same. So why should we treat each other differently based on some superficial uh, difference? So this is what I'm saying. Animals are not free, are they? So if they're not free and they're a sentient being who values freedom, liberty, just like us, what are they? They're a slave, okay? We're exploiting innocent beings for their body. Human beings can voice their suffering, okay? They've got a chance to escape, okay? Animals have no chance, they are vulnerable. They cannot speak up for themselves. They cannot form and uh, mobilize as activists and, and form a coalition against um, the dairy industry. You know, that's what we're here for. We can speak for them. And it might make people uncomfortable, me speaking up for animals, but we're not here to make people comfortable. I mean, I can be polite, I can be polite, but I'm not going to betray the animals. If abolitionists didn't speak up for what happened back then with uh, slaves, it would, it would have never been abolished. Okay? And I'm sure it made some uh, slave owners a little bit angry to not have their uh, slaves picking their cotton for them. But it's not about the slave owners. In the same way, it's not about the animal farmers. Now, they can move into more ethical industries. They will, they, there will be a demand for vegan products. Okay? And the farmers, we don't want farmers out of a job. We want them to change the job. Okay? We want their job not to involve directly involve a victim. I'm pretty sure farmers don't see themselves as slave drivers and obviously it's a huge source of income in the UK. Yeah. What do you say to those farmers that say, you know, this movement is trying to put us out of a job, this is our livelihood, well, this is okay. how we live? Now the reason farmers don't see themselves as slave owners is because they don't see animals as victims. We victimised animals to the degree that they're not even considered victims. As for there being money in owning animals and objectifying and exploiting them and killing them, money should not, we should not value money over life, okay? This is the root of all that's wrong with the world. Farmers aren't going to be out of a job when they move into vegan products. There's going to be a massive demand and there is a massive de demand for plant-based milk alternatives. Uh, Meat-free alternatives have gone up 987% in the UK alone, just, in la just last year. Okay, so there's gonna be room for plant farming, moving into other industries. I mean, we have to think of it from the victim's perspective, not from the oppressor's perspective, which is human beings, okay? What do you think to farmers saying that they're frightened by the presence of you guys on their property or trespassing or, you know, kind of okay. insinuating that what they are doing is inhuman? I think they might be a little bit nervous because the conditions on their farms, uh, they know how uh, bad they are. Free range farms, I've seen them. And when activists go in there and bring footage out and show it to their the, the public, you know, what, what, they look guilty, don't they? And this is what I'm talking about. This isn't about the farmers feeling a certain way. There's beings in there who are being persecuted, sent on slaughterhouses, trucks and killed. Okay. What role do you think young people play in all this? And how much of an explosion in this movement have you seen? It's, well, the thing is with young people, they, they are less conditioned. So they, they are less indoctrinated to society. They're, they're more fr free thinkers. Okay, the longer that you've been in this society, the more heavily conditioned you are to it. They want to make a change. They want to do something good in the world. And the best thing you can do is change yourself. If you want to change the world, you change yourself, your lifestyle habits. And the youth are the future, aren't they? They really are. So in the same way we, as a society, collectively agree that women deserve rights, black people deserve rights, uh, people with a mental disability deserve rights. In the same way now, this movement believes that animals deserve the same rights. Now, do they deserve the right to drive a car? No, we're just basically asking for fundamental rights of freedom and liberty. The, the right to, to, to walk around and not be harmed or exploited or viewed out as a product. And this is what this movement's about. The exponential growth of the movement is just like, it cannot be measured. It's growing faster and faster by the year. There's something called a snowball effect where something happens painfully slow. And what we're seeing is it picking up. Okay, and it's starting to explode. The last two years, activism has explode, exploded all over the world. Vegans everywhere are standing up. People are going vegan en masse. Plant-based milk industries are raking in the money. Dairy is going down, which is good. Dairy farmers can find some soybeans to, to farm, okay, and leave the cows alone. 
do you feel like you've got a kind of prophecy that you need to fulfill like do you feel like there's a an aim you won't rest unless you've achieved well i've always had a desire to speak for animals when i realized i wanted to help someone okay i wanted to give back and i felt like the animals needed it the most because we can't even collectively agree that a pig has moral value now what's that pig supposed to do when no one even cares about them okay this is this is what fuels my fire i want people to understand that that pig does not deserve for one second what we do to them what is the end goal of all this what type of world would you like to see us live in i don't want to see a world where animals are treated nicely before they are savagely killed i want to see a world where animals are free and liberated that's the world i want to see